spot a tidying up? Because we've got a very important guest coming today. And here you are. And just for you, this is what I've lined up. How about an explosive new way of framing your pictures? And take a bit of this and a bit of that, and you've got the makings of a big art attack. And I'll show you a way to turn a bottle into a bank. Hey, here's a good art attack tip. One of the best ways to teach yourself how to draw faces is to do it in front of a mirror. Just spend some time staring at yourself. Now, look at all the bits on your face, the shapes, and where they're positioned. So, okay, let's start with the eyes. Now, they're about halfway between the top of the head and the bottom. Then, look at the shape. Now, if you look closely, they're not round, but your eyes are quite flat, sort of an oval with a pointed end right in the corner. In fact, your eyeball itself doesn't go all the way into the corner. So, okay, let's draw that. Halfway up the head, a flat oval shape with a pointy bit in the corner. Do one there and there, halfway up, and flat oval with a pointy bit in the corner. And the eyeball doesn't go all the way into the corner, like that. So, okay, what about the coloured part of your eyes? Well, it's round and it's darker around the edges with a black circle in the middle and it's also tucked under your top eyelid a bit. So, okay, here we go. So, round, tucked under the eyelid at the top and dark around the edges with black circle in the middle. And here's another tip. Just leave a highlight in the black bit. Then just shade the coloured bit out from the middle. Your eye really comes to life. And do the same with the other eye. And it helps if you keep looking in the mirror. And just finish it off. Then look closely at the curved shapes of your eyelids and your eyebrows above them and draw them. So just draw the creases of the eyelids, like that, with curved eyebrows above. And the nose has long sides and a bobbly bit on the end with a bobble each side. And do the same for your mouth. Get all those curves and these lines that come out across your lips. And just keep looking in the mirror at all the bits and draw what you see. Put on some shading. And just pick out all the lines on your eyes. More shading. Just really look and draw in all those details that you see. If you keep practicing, getting everything in the right position, you'll soon be drawing perfect faces. Try it yourself. Spend some time looking in the mirror and teach yourself to draw faces. Oh, what a great art attack tip. Teach yourself faces. Hello. Yes, it's me again, the head. And talking of faces, did you know that the human head contains 22 bones and produces this much spit in one day? Anyway, that is quite enough of that. Hey, I had a go at drawing a face the other day, and I'm very pleased with the result. Do you want to see it? <laughs> a clock face! <laughs> it's all in the timing, you know. <laughs>
Oh, what a cool big art attack. And what a dynamic picture that is, snowboarding over an icy precipice in the snowy mountains. Hey, I'd love to have a go at snowboarding. I'm sure I'd be brilliant at it. But it never snows round here. Oh no, I think I'll go and chill out somewhere else. Fee-fi-fo-fum. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Hey, have you heard about the goose that laid the golden egg? Well, I've got one. Look at that. Well, OK, it's not a goose, it's a chicken. And no, it doesn't lay eggs. It lays... money. <laughs> That's my kind of chicken. And believe it or not, it's all made from one of these, an empty plastic bottle. It's a kind of bottle bank. Simple to make in four easy parts. A four-part attack. For the first part, you need to get someone to help you carefully cut out a money slit into the opposite side of the bottle to the handle. Then lay the bottle down onto the handle and this end is the head end. The end with the lid is the tail end. To create the body shape, scrunch and shape a small pillow of newspaper and tape it onto one side of the bottle. Then do exactly the same on the other side and curve some of your paper underneath to form a sort of padded base. Now I'm using double-sided tape for this, but you use plenty of sticky tape. Stick some more newspaper to the front end, the end without the bottle top, and this is the chicken's breast. And for the chicken wings, make two smaller newspaper pads and tape them at the sides. Your chicken also needs a tail, so take some more newspaper, fold it in half, and then fold it in half again, and then fold it into a sort of triangle like this, and then just fold it over and pull the tail up a bit so it's at a jaunty angle and tape that into place on your chicken's body. And again, you use plenty of tape for this. So when you've done that, you have your very basic chicken shape. And it's a good idea to use lots of tape to make it nice and secure. Now you need to make your chicken's head and neck. To make the chicken's neck, you need to fold a semicircle of card into a cone and then just tape it into position. Use plenty of tape again for this. And when you've attached the cone to your chicken's body, then you have to flatten the point a bit like that. Then make a head from a newspaper ball and add little newspaper eyes, a card beak and a comb on top of the chicken's head. Then just place it on the bent bit of cone and tape it into place. Next, you can add some feather detail using bits of cereal box card cut like this. And then stick them on so they overlap. And use as many as you want until you get a fully feathered friend. <laughs> now the card feathers on both wings and even some on the breast. Now she needs some legs. To give your bird some legs, roll bits of cereal box card into tubes like these. Attach some cardboard box feet to the tubes and some newspaper ball thighs at the top and glue or tape the legs to the underneath of the bird so they're nice and secure. You don't want everything to fall apart when you stand it up. And here's a tip. When you've attached the legs, make sure that you test that they're in the right place and the bird will stand up before you continue doing anything else. Look at that. Ta-da! Now she needs a bit of um, chicken skin. For this, you need torn bits of kitchen tissue and glue mixed in equal parts with water. Now the idea is to paint on the glue mixture all over your chicken and just lay on strips of your kitchen tissue and then paste over them. Now you don't need to cover the whole bird, just use the glue and tissue to smooth over certain areas like where the head 
a neck join and just pop the tissue on there like that mold it to shape and then put some on near the start of the feathered areas just to secure them and whatever you do make sure you don't put tissue over your money slit or the lid of your bottle just carefully go around the edges of those places and when you've done all those bits let the glue dry now it might take some time and when it's dried you'll have a good strong skin that makes a good surface to paint on and when the whole bird is painted here she is you just pop your money into the top like that and save away and if you want to get your money out just turn around take the bottom off or the lid and out it comes brilliant eh and of course you can use a plastic bottle like in this one as the basis for any type of bird bottle bank how about a duck complete with webbed feet or a peacock and you can see it's roughly the same as a chicken for the body it's just got a huge load of tail feathers made out of card and look at this a flamingo a sort of chicken shape with a long neck and very long legs and what about this chap a toucan he's got a big colorful beak <laughs> try it yourself bird bottle banks what's my favorite part of art attack your art attacks all the stuff that you sent in let's have a look at it it's all on the art attack gallery Look at this, Michaela's incredible art attack is almost a sculpture. She's used cardboard box card to build up the relief and then painted it with earthy colours. And Rhea's picture of a flower has been drawn using water-soluble pencils and a wash of water. It's given it a real delicate feel. In this landscape, Millie has used very vivid colours. There are loads of bold brush strokes. It must have taken her ages. Yeah, and you know what, Millie? Those colours are so vibrant, it reminded me of a trick that I've learnt over the years, especially when using watercolours, and that's keep your water clean. <laughs> now, I know you're thinking that would be impossible when you're doing a painting as you're constantly using your water. However, the secret is to have two pots of water. Use one pot for the dirty jobs to wash all your brushes out in and get rid of the paint, and the other pot, keep that clean, just for the clean water. Then you can dip your paintbrush into it before selecting a new colour from your paint box and this will prevent your paints from becoming mixed and going muddy and your painting will then remain really bold and vibrant. Nice one, Millie. Now, this picture from Jake is spooky. I like the cut-out ghosts and witches. Very sinister. And Emily's great abstract picture has a sort of graphic -y look. The clever use of strong, bold colours makes this art attack really effective. Do you know what? I love silhouette pictures, and this one from Louise is fab. I like the detail on the leaves of the plants. Look at that, lots of tricky shapes that she's cut out there. And Danica's picture could almost be one of those graphic film posters. The bold colours and shapes work brilliantly. I bet she went dotty sticking all those sequins down, though. Yeah, fantastic art attack there from Danica. And you know what? All those sequins and dots have given me a great idea for an art attack. A really funky way to mount a picture that you don't want to put in a frame. Look at that. It looks all dotty, crazy and manic, doesn't it? It's a sort of manic mount. <laughs> now, to make one, all you basically need is your picture and some bits of cardboard box card. And stick whatever you want to frame, whether it's a photo or magazine picture, onto your card. Then, you need to make a sort of explosion. Just draw an explosion around the main part of your picture. And when you're happy with the shape of it, cut it out. And then you need to use thick black pen to outline those edges. Next, you need to cut out three more cardboard box explosions, each one a bit bigger than the one before. And at this stage, it's a good idea to arrange them on top of each other to see how they look. Photo on top, next biggest, and the biggest at the back. Next, paint these card explosions. Now, comic colours work really well. How about a dotty one, a yellow one, and maybe a red one? 
Again, it's a good idea to use a black marker to outline the explosions. To assemble the manic mount so that there is a gap between each layer, you need to make three card blocks. Each is made up of two square bits of card stuck together. Stick one of these blocks to the centre of the largest explosion, dab a blob of glue on top, and then carefully place the slightly smaller explosion on the top. It's a good idea to slightly offset your explosion so that all the different points can be seen clearly. Then continue by placing a block, then an explosion, a block, then an explosion, with your photo explosion on top. And when they're in position, glue them firmly into place. Great, isn't it? And those dots really set off the picture on the manic mount. And if you put some string on the back, you can hang them up and you can try lots of different designs. How about a glittery one? Ugh, she's a glitter gran. Or instead of explosion shapes, how's about splats? Hmm, a splat attack. <laughs> Try it yourself, a manic mount, and don't forget you can check out the website for fact sheets on this and all the other artifacts in the show, and I'll see you next time. Ta-ra!